Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're continuing our building of our login screen with our password element. And if you remember, um, we were here and we had created an email input. Um, in this, I was, I was going to do show password. It's especially useful uh, in the UI for mobile. So basically, if you click on email, if you remember, there's things that hide. And then you have the options to show password or remember me. And uh, these OAuth buttons show up on the bottom. So we're going to do all that today, but we're going to emit the show password. It's definitely going to stay it because I think it's sort of useful, but it's a lot of work compared to the value it brings your client ultimately uh, or your user ultimately. So what we're going to do is we're going to emit it in the tutorial and it's going to stay here for you guys who want to use it um, for your, your own app if you copy and paste the uh, no logo uh, module. So... Let's delete the label and let's build it out. If you remember, there's a, there's a group here, easy, that when you click, it uh, disappears and it sets focus to um, the email input. So what we're going to do is we're going to select that parent. We're going to right click. And there's a very powerful function in Bubble that allows you to copy with workflows. So basically, uh, all the stuff that we've been using will actually appear here when I paste with workflows. So here it is. Let's drag this out and let's just align them to the left. And then let's close it back. And then let's, uh, in here, there's a button that says reveal in the elements tree. We're going to go find it. We're going to change the text email to be text password. And we're going to grab the input, call this one input password. And when you do that, actually in the workflows, um, you'll notice that Bubble automatically changes the name of the element as well. So that's really, really useful. Um, now, when we click on this, it'll focus on input password. And we want input password to be an actual password input. All right, so if you check it out, right out of the box, it should work. Let's wait, see it loading. Let's click on password, and we can start typing out a password. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a beautiful thing. We did it as quick and easy as that. Once you've built out something, no matter how complex, you can right-click, copy with workflows, and paste it with workflows, and then adapt it. Um, so that's what we did right here. Good stuff. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a checkbox. And again... I am going to cheat and grab a checkbox that I've already built out uh, and copy with workflows and paste with workflows in here. And that makes it easier for me. It does create an issue, you'll notice. I think it's a styling issue. Yep, a styling issue. And we're going to fix that really quickly. But it's much easier than just rebuilding the whole thing from scratch. So we're going to make sure that uh, we go ahead and do that. Let's just grab this here and uh, its actual first parent. And let's count the x value. It should be 40, but it's 39. And then let's grab uh, the input and add that. Let's reveal this in the elements tree. Where are you? It's going to be in here, obviously. And it's going to be um, input password. Sorry, x of 6, so 45. Let's go ahead and put this at an x of 45. Let's bring this in. And if it aligns left, it'll always align with the input, which is what we're after. Let's fix this right here by giving it no style and then giving it the right font, which is Montserrat, Montserrat 300. Size 14 should work. As long as this is the right color, we're good. All right, let's bring it down and center it vertically. Nice. So now we have our, no, it didn't like it. There you go. Now we have our checkbox and it works. Um, I'll refer you to the video where I showed people how to make checkboxes for this purpose and then you'll have a checkbox. All right, now let's go ahead and add a button, this one here. Um, if it's ugly like this and you haven't styled it yet, we're gonna go do that with you. Easy peasy, just go to, uh, let's give it the same X. What was it, 45? And then let's go to edit style for standard buttons and then you can pick out your colors here. I want it to be my base color, and when it's hovered, I want it to be my highlighted color, and when it's not clickable, I want it to be gray. That's too dark. Let's go with 8A. And the font, of course, Montserrat 300. Nailed it. Okay, let's go back to design here. And now we have our button. Um, this one's going to say login. And then on the side, of, beside this button, we want a little thing that says something like, um, forgot your password, question mark. We're gonna make this small, and we're gonna remove this. We're gonna make it cormorant, uh, regular 14, 
666. And we're going to underline this for convention so that people know that it's a link. So you and here break you nailed it. And there it is, an underlined, beautiful little passage of Cormorant. And then we're going to right click here, group these elements into a group, click on this one, right click and say center vertically to the group. We're going to select both of them again, and we're going to go ungroup and we're going to delete this group because we don't want redundant elements. Um, we basically want the fewest amount of elements as possible. We're going to align this right and we're going to apply a max width of 100. So here it stays. Here's a login button and it's taking up the full amount of room. Next, we need those OAuth buttons, which we've already built out here, all casual like. So we're going to go delete. Um, we're actually going to wait until we do the workflows to do these because I'm just going to, once the workflows exist, copy with workflows and paste them with workflows in here. So we'll leave these here and we'll leave them misaligned so that we know that we have to, so that we could see them and make sure everything works, but so that we know we have to actually build these out. And similarly, um, because the workflows are going to be in the groups, we're going to actually copy these with workflows, paste them into here, and then reorganize them because they are almost the same, but we're going to go to no logo .io slash SVG. And we're going to end up eventually uh, copying the little icons here by clicking on the icon and then replacing oops, all of this with that. And then it'll work exactly the same way. So you have to make sure obviously it's square. So 42. And then we're going to close this, this around it. And then we're going to put these right here with the workflows. Okay, so that's the reason we're not doing this yet. But actually, we do want uh, to see that everything is working fine. So we're going to put them in here. They don't have to be aligned or anything since we're going to be realigning them. But uh, yeah, let's at least center them vertically here and uh, take a preview. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have our three OAuth buttons. Wonderful stuff. We have our login, forgot password, our remember me. We have our email our, and our password sign up. And all we're missing is uh, we have to, first of all, check that this still works. So we have our login here. When we click on email, this should disappear. Is it just taking a while? Or Right. That, that's what we forgot to add. All right. So now we can double click here on group easy and say start edit workflow. And we could say uh, element actions set state of snap holder custom state email login to be yes. And if you remember, um, that's going to regulate whether or not these are showing this one here, either the small icons or the big icons. All right, so let's grab a preview of that in our this page. Is everything good here? Nope, it's not good. Let's go ahead and do that and do this. And then once we click on email, it should work this time. There you go. Now you have your three. You have your login, your forgot password, or your remember me. And you can set your focus to email or password like this. And it's actually quite nice uh, when the user taps it. Sometimes there's a bit of throttling going on. Um, if you'll notice, because I'm, I'm not on a paid plan, because um, so it's going to be a little bit slower. But once you upgrade to a paid plan, you should be uh, you should have full functionality and, and speed of access. If you find it too slow, just eliminate email, just hide email uh, instead of making it shrink up like this and lose the animation and everything will work a lot smoother. All right. So now we have our login page and we're ready to go. You can add an or here and I'll just let you take a look at the way that I built it. Uh, more, I guess, pixel perfect. Everything aligns here to the left and also aligns to the left when you're uh, when you have a brand new page like this, um, these align, this aligns, or email, click here, it goes up. All right, so you can pause it and take a look and try to, but like I said in previous videos, every, uh, most of the time that I spend building out apps is making everything align and making everything pixel perfect. And it's sort of a mentality that you have to develop, and it's sort of a, a, something that you have to uh, build up to, how to use the alignment and how to use this responsive engine. And that's what takes took me, I guess, the longest to learn. The workflows are relatively easy. Putting stuff in is relatively easy. Making everything look good is what's more difficult. So with that being said, we're almost done here. We just need a little bit of text to tell our users, of course, legally, that um, by logging in, they agree to the terms and whatever privacy policy. And we can put that in here uh, with a link. And yeah, so let's just copy this text for now. And um, it'll be good by the time we come back to it. Okay, so that's it for now. We have all of our visual elements and we can start um, basically coding it in. We'll have a little bit of cleanup to do at the end here, but that's basically it. All right, we'll see you in the next one.